Idol Showdown is fun. It's messed up in literally dozens of ways, but at its core, I enjoy it. The combo system is intuitive, there's unique characters and assists to learn, and overall, it's just amazing to pick up and play with my friends. Now, I want to get this out of the way. I'm not really a fan of VTubers or idols or anything like that. I don't know much about them, and that's okay. It's just not my sphere. But it's cool to me that these characters, who are gamers and singers and whatnot, translate in such dynamic ways to a fighting game, even though I really don't feel like it should work this well. And that got me thinking, why does it work so well? From what I've seen, these VTubers in the game aren't big fans of fighting games. I've seen Corone do like three combos on Twitter though, so I'll give her props. But with that said, I wouldn't think most of their fans would be fighting game enjoyers either. And yet, this game is doing better than some other similar releases like DNF Duel on their first respective weeks. How is it possible that a fan project could garner so much attention and become such a hit among not only fighting game fans, but also fans of Hollow Live as well? Before getting into the video, I just want to say thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. There's a lot of really cool stuff on the way on the channel, so if you like this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for future videos. With that out of the way, let's get back into it. To begin to understand how this did so well, let's look at other attempts that maybe did or didn't do as well. As mentioned before, there's examples from Arc System Works like Grand Blue Fantasy Versus or DNF Duel. While yes, these games are targeted at fighting game players since they're, you know, fighting games, I couldn't have told you about a single character in these franchises until I started playing those fighting games. Grand Blue Fantasy is a Japanese-only mobile game, and DNF is a 2D beat-em-up with RPG elements. Both games are free to play and are massively successful. Like, I don't know how else to make this point other than to say that, combined, both games have amassed close to $30 billion since their releases. It's no wonder they aim to make a fighting game to get at another market. It definitely worked on me. I didn't spend any money on it, but I downloaded Grand Blue Fantasy and gave it a try just to see what I was missing. And that's when I noticed it. The music, the user interface, the portraits of the characters, it all felt familiar to me in the mobile game. Of course, at this point, I've been playing Grand Blue Fantasy Versus on and off for a few years, but it was wild to me to see how at home I felt. Idol Showdown is no exception to this technique. The music of the game is all remixed versions of Hollow Live tracks, the Super Chat mechanic is taken almost exactly from how Super Chats look on stream, and it's all full of so much love. Lots of the voice clips even come directly from the idols themselves and aren't just ripped from streams or videos. Actually, uh, they, they reached out to me and they're like, hey, Ollie, we're, we're doing this game. Do you want to you wanna voice act? You're going to be like a merchant. And I said, oh, yeah, heck yeah, what, let's, let's freaking go. The intent of these games is to make you feel comfortable jumping from one version to the next. You're supposed to recognize things to cast the illusion of familiarity. It's a cool tactic, but it seems to only apply to the extra bits, like the bells and whistles. But in the case of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, how are the developers supposed to make a fighting game feel like a turn-based mobile RPG? In order to ease players from the RPG loop into the fighting game arena, the developers had to get creative. It isn't enough to just make a game that plays like Street Fighter with characters from a different IP. There needs to be something that ties the core gameplay together, and Grand Blue Fantasy Versus takes a pretty cool approach here. As most people know, instead of moves being tied to a special meter in the game, they're tied to cooldown timings. Now, you can love or hate the system, but what's great about it is how true it stays to the way moves work in the original game. Another example of this is the way Pokémon handles its combat. As pretty much everyone knows, Pokemon is a turn-based game in which certain Pokemon have advantages over others. I think the way in which this translates to fighting games is actually pretty cool and unique. Pokémon Tournament at first glance seems to play just like any other arena fighter, but there's more to it considering that's only about a third of what the game actually is. Another third gameplay-wise is Pokémon's phase system. For those who might be unfamiliar with the system, 
Pokémon Tournament has two phases, Field Phase and Dual Phase. Field Phase is the initial phase of a battle where players have control of their character in all three dimensions and generally can engage in combat from pretty far away. This part of the gameplay looks pretty much like any other arena fighter out there as players run around the battleground throwing projectiles at each other and even engaging in some mid-range combos. But things become very different once there's a phase shift. Dual phase is the part of combat that looks more like a traditional 2D fighter. Movement is restricted and close range combos start to look more familiar. Not to get too deep into it, but players can't stay in dual phase indefinitely as every move has a certain value that adds up for each hit. Once the total value equals a certain number, dual phase just ends resetting the battle to field phase. The phase system was controversial to say the least, but I think it was an attempt to merge a Pokemon fighting game with a core part of the Pokemon RPG experience. Now, many people didn't really like this system making its way into a fighting game, as it removes a player's ability to control when they can stay engaged or not. I would disagree and say it's an interesting mechanic that allows players to optimize different situations and make decisions in real time that can change the outcome of a match. That said, it could just be me. But there's another way that Pokémon translates ideas into the realm of a fighting game. It's the culture of Tekken. For me and many others in the FGC, this was probably the biggest selling point for Pokémon Tournament. It's not just a Pokémon fighting game, it's a 3D fighter with Pokémon characters using signature moves of Tekken characters. I don't know about you, but seeing Pikachu do Hell Sweeps and Electric Wind Godfist was enough to get me interested. I'm not into Pokémon personally, so it would have been difficult for them to get me to buy a spin-off game if it was based solely off of Pokémon alone. The genius of that is now they've capitalized on the cultures of Pokemon and Tekken at the same time, while developing a unique and accessible combat system that takes inspiration from both. Moving away from video game inspirations, video games like Dragon Ball Fighters also do a great job at this considering it's based off of a television and manga series. That said, it's pretty reasonable to say Dragon Ball is just as known for its video games as it is for the TV series, but I think Dragon Ball Fighters tackles it exceptionally well among its peers. From the Budokai Tenkaichi games, Xenoverse, and everything in between, Dragon Ball Fighters stands out the most to me. The game takes inspiration from almost every form of Dragon Ball media and transforms it into a cohesive fighting game. Almost every single normal and special move in the game comes from something else. The attention to detail is so minute that even the auto combos are references to stills from the anime and manga, oftentimes they're references stacked on top of each other. In doing this, hardcore fans will recognize the love and care put into these references, and casual fans or people who just want to play a fighting game will enjoy the gameplay and crisp visuals. The ultimate example of this is dramatic finishes. These aren't necessarily something we've never seen before, but once again, the level of polish on these cinematics rival against the show and movies themselves. It's truly impressive. These weren't necessary for the game to play well, but it's a nod to what makes the series so loved, and to exclude it would be missing out big time. This idea is the core of what makes Idol Showdown such a fun game, and probably the biggest factor behind its success. If you're not familiar with it, Idol Showdown is a fan-produced game in which virtual streaming personalities battle each other with wacky moves and shenanigans. Some of them are just cute anime girls while others are half girl, half dragon, and they're all quite fun. The mechanics are easy to grasp, combo structure is unique, but intuitive, and overall, the game is just funny. And it's not just for Hollow Live fans, the game also has its fair share of FGC references. Corona Super is the same as Wolverines from Marvel vs. Capcom. Botons is a nod to Solid Snake's Final Smash and Brawl, and Fubuki's is a clear reference to Valentine's Super in Skullgirls. As for the gameplay itself, it's no secret that the game is a pretty much unbalanced jumble, but that's exactly why I think it's perfect. If you were tasked with making a game to represent a culture of people who are like this, How would you do it? 
These characters make thousands of people laugh and smile every day, so it's no surprise that while playing the game, I legitimately couldn't have kept a straight face if I wanted to. And that's not just me. Everyone's reaction online to the game seems to be this way as well. With the focus for so many games lately being on esports, it's nice to play something that's just fun to mess around in with your friends. It's not trying to push any boundaries, but instead it wants you to dig into it and break it as much as you possibly can. On top of the main cast, there's assists who are even more kawaii than the playable characters themselves, and they're what really makes the game incredible in my opinion. This one could slow down time for way too long, leading to disgusting mix-up opportunities. Here's a girl who runs from the other side of the screen talking about how sexually frustrated she is before she grabs and stuns the opponent. Mind you, assists can be called pretty much from block stun and at almost any other point, meaning you'll often see situations that look like this. Like, the worst part is, they don't, they're not even blocking on wake up. They're just, every time I hit them, they just up back, call the thing, or like, man. The movesets of these characters come from various sources, based on who they are. Some moves come from the type of games they play, like for example, Botan. Her moves are based around the fact that she likes FPS games, and whenever she throws grenades, she makes a certain sound, which of course they incorporated into the game. Others are based more directly around the character themselves, like Coco being a dragon who likes Yakuza. Her brash demeanor and crass attitude shine through so well in the game, and her being built as a grappler emphasizes her personality even more. She's got what is maybe my favorite walk backwards animation ever, and it's just glorious. There's something relaxing about this game, for what it's worth considering it's a fighting game. I haven't felt any kind of pressure, and I've yet to see anyone get genuinely serious or frustrated while playing it. The game being ridiculous forces you to sit back and just have fun, the same way you would while in a stream with one of these personalities. These idols aren't just characters or digital beings, they're real people. People with dreams and aspirations who work to put smiles on their fans' faces. It's cool to see fans pay it forward back to them and create such a wonderful game that can encapsulate what Hollow Live is really all about. <laughs> That's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Dun 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 d